hello guys welcome back in this series of video we will look at the sockets the system.net sockets namespace contains a managed implementation of the windows socket interface all other network access classes in the system.net namespace are built on top of this implementation of sockets the .NET Framework Sockets class is a managed code version of the socket services provided by the WinSoc 32 API. In the most cases, the sockets class methods simply marshal data into their native Win32 counterparts and handle any necessary security checks. The socket class supports two basic modes synchronous and asynchronous. In synchronous mode, calls to functions that perform network operations such as send and receive wait until the operation completes before returning control to the calling program. In the asynchronous mode, these calls return immediately. So in this series, obviously we will look at both the synchronous and asynchronous mode in terms of actually um, sockets. So, rather than just talking too much, stay tight and let's get started. In the first bit of this video, we will look at creating an, we will look at creating a synchronous client using a TCP protocol. So, first of all, we would say we create we create a new class. Uh, of course, a, we put a, a public class here. And we call it um, sync socket client. So this means a synchronous socket client, and the the, the, the bit obviously this bit will be public static. We add a void method, and we can say. Client. And of course we add some details first we add a byte array and we can just call it bytes or whatever we want to call it and we initialize it with a with 1024 bytes inside so obviously we can put our try catch here and then inside our try we start some stuff obviously we can say IP host entry uh, we can say an IP host this will be our host and we can say um, DNS dot get host entry then we can say DNS dot get host name So we can say variable host name. So we can say we can pull our host name here. Can we just print it out? Then what what next is some IP address. This IP. This will be IP host that address list, and we, we take the first bit, and then um, the IP endpoint. Um, we can say remote endpoint. This will be new. We pass in a new. So obviously we pass the IP.
and our port number so we just designate any port for now so um, the next bit of course will be um, socket sander I mean socket we call it sender and we, we initialize a new socket we pass in the necessary details our IP dot address family and um, socket type dot stream and protocol type protocol type dot tcp so we can put another try cache here so inside here what we do is first we cache um, an argument now exception so we just print out the message so we just catch some couple of exceptions as well so we catch a socket exception print it out and we say e.message and we just put a normal exception say either message as well so we come back to our try here so inside here we do some small simple stuff here first we say sender dot connect so we passed in a remote IP endpoint and we can say socket connected And then we can say sender dot remote endpoint dot to string. Just print it out one out. And we can say um, we can add another byte array, and we can call it the message msg for message, and we can say encoding dot ac dot get bytes that we can say this is just a test so here it's not bytes it's just a byte so there's one more thing int this is a byte to be received so we can say encoding again dot ac dot get bytes Oh no, okay, so because before this, there's one more thing we have to remove this here. So after that, this is say int, and we can say byte send is equal to sender dot send. So we can add the message msg. So here we can say an int byte sent is equal to sender dot of have byte sent. Okay, so it's int byte received is equal to sender dot send dot receive 
Yeah, we can pull our bites. Then we can write something here. We can say I call the test encoding dot AC dot get string say bytes zero then the byte receive so the next bit of course we say we will be uh, release socket so we can say sender dot shutdown we pass in a socket then dot close how we can close the socket so as you can see they are pretty simple stuff so the next bit of course is to handle the last bits of the of the catch so here what we, all we do is we just say just say e dot message so we come to the, the main here and obviously we try to run it and we will get errors definitely but obviously we continue our bio because we don't have the, the, the server so what we do is we can say sync socket client dot start then we can say console dot relay. So we F5 to see what comes out of it, obviously. So we press N key to continue. So as you can see specified argument was out of range of a valid value parameter name is the port so we look at the port what's wrong with it so the, the specified value for our port is out of range so remove some here and we come back again press enter So we've got our host and no connection could be made because the target machine actively refused it. Yes, because we don't have a server or a listener that is obviously listening for an incoming ping or incoming connection. So the next bit obviously is we go ahead and build a, uh, um, a, a listener or a server to, to, to listen to our incoming message from the client. So hold on tight for the next bit. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and catch up on the next video. Bye bye.